Today we are going to weave a standard rush chair. This chair is a ladder back. It's been refinished. It's been re-glued, cleaned out. It's ready to go. First we want to get a coil of rush to work with. I like to take a piece of masking tape and tape the end to itself. This keeps the coil from getting tangled as I'm working with it. I want to get enough in my hand that's a comfortable amount for me to work with. That amount will vary with the chair and with the different people who are weaving. Take your coil of rush out of the water, shake off any excess water. You should be able to see that it's quite moist and this makes it pliable and easier to work with. To start the chair, you want to know how much you need to fill in in the front. So you want to measure the distance between the back legs, 13 and a quarter inches. Measure the distance in the front, 16 and a quarter inches. Subtract the back measurement from the front measurement and put a mark measuring in from each rail. In this instance, it'll be one and three eighths inches. I've already pre-marked it actually. The same on this side, one and three eighths inches. The distance between those two marks should equal the distance in the back. In this case, it's 13 and a quarter inches. So we're going to weave the front corners until we get up to that line. And then the front will be square with the back and we will start weaving the entire chair. You want to attach your first strand to the inside near the front leg. I use a cable staple gun. If you can see the end of this, it's a cable staple gun. It fits right in there. A normal staple gun has a wide flat staple, which it is not as good as this. This is the best tool I have found to attach it. If you don't have a cable staple gun, you can use a standard carpet tack. It's a little bit slower and kind of hard to get started. I'll show you how it would go. And you can do that each time. I find it slows me down, so I just use the staple gun. I'm going to leave the tack in. You don't need both, but it's not going to hurt. You want to then take your coil. It's going to go over the top of the front rail, underneath it, and up through the middle. Then you're going to go over the left rail and back up through the middle. Up over the right rail and back up through the middle. Over the front rail, back up through the middle, and then you're going to lay your coil down. Now we're going to go back and tighten this up. You want to pull real tight and mold it right around there. And you want it to be a right angle right there and tighten that up and as you go you're continually holding the tension. This finger is holding the tension underneath while I let go. And I want to go on this side and pull it tight. Then I can let go with this hand. Continually making sure the tension stays on the rush. And then we're going to attach it to the inside rail over here. And then we're going to cut it off. Then you do another one. You go a little further up the line. You can see the holes from the previous person. This particular chair had tacks. The same pattern. Over the front rail, come up through the middle, over the left rail, up through the middle, over the right rail, up through the middle, over the front rail, up through the middle, and set your coil down. Now you want to pull your second one in tight and you want to start working your corners. You don't want gaps like that. And you don't want gaps like that. This is what a lot of beginners end up doing. You want to take this corner and work it with your finger underneath and your thumb and make sure they're tight together, as tight as you can get them. And you continue all the way across. Work this corner. So that the strands are as tight together as you can get them. Attach it to the side rail. 
cut it off. We have now woven four strands. You can see that they're attached, each one a little bit further up the side rail on both sides. Every time I get four strands woven, you can see they're starting to not be square or parallel. They're leaning in. So you want to take a wooden wedge and a hammer and you want to tap them over top side, bottom, everywhere needed so that they're perfectly parallel and not leaning either way. And you're going to want to do that to all four sides. You can see they're leaning. It's easy to compress the material if it's moist. It'll slide right uh, nice tight together. And every time you wrap four strands, you want to take the time to do that. All right, well now we have the front completely filled in. It's up to the black line. You may want to double check it. Make sure that that measurement is the same or really close as the measurement in the back. And we are at that point now. So I'm going to attach one more strand to the left side. And that'll be the last time we need to do that. Take our coil and repeat the same pattern. The entire chair has the same pattern. Over the front rail, up through the middle. Over the left rail, up through the middle. Over the right rail, over the front rail. Now we're going to start weaving the back also. So you're going to go over the back rail and up through the middle. Over the right rail, up through the middle. Over the left rail, up through the middle, over the back rail, up through the middle, and lay down the coil. Now we need to go back and tighten this up, just as we were doing as we filled in the front. Do you see how that wants to ride up there, and how this bottom one is not pulled out? You need to pull the bottom one out, pull that one down, and work that corner so it looks good. You don't want it with gaps, you want it tight. There's no way when the chair is done to come back and fix any gaps here. The time to do it is while you're weaving. Then you continue over. Do the same thing on this side. Push and pull the strands as needed to make it a nice snug fit. Now we're going to the back. And I pull it as tight as I can every time. Tighten up that corner. Come across to here. Work that corner. Now to hold the tension, you're going to want to use a clamp and then you can let go with your hands and your tension is maintained with that clamp. We'll do another strand like that. Same pattern. Over the rail, up the middle. And you see how I'm working with a coil and the coil is not getting tangled. It unravels as I need it. And then we're going to tighten this up. Again, working this corner, this bottom piece I always wants to tuck under. You need to pull it out, push that one down, work the corner with your fingers, because that's what's going to be showing at the end, is the, the time you spend working the corners. and use your clamp to keep the tension on. Now we're going to keep weaving and get it up to the point where it needs cardboard added. You're going to keep doing this same pattern over and over and over. Always remember every four strands or even three or two if you need to, take your hammer and wedge and tap that over. One thing you want to watch for is that when you go over, you don't want it to be riding on top of itself on any of the sides. Especially in the back, that's going to happen to you because you can't see it. So you may have to keep double checking the back. We'll look at that again a little bit I've later. I've been weaving the chair along using the same pattern, keeping my strands parallel. You can see it's the same distance here as it is here. You want that to be the same distance as you work along. 
I've added some pieces. You can see knots. There's one here. There's one here. And we will cover how to do that when we add our next piece. Uh, we are at the point now where it needs to be filled with carp cardboard triangles. And that's going to fill this void here. If you don't put it in there as the chair is used, it will sink down and eventually break along that edge. So we use cardboard triangles. I keep a box of them pre-cut. It's just handier for me. And you find a size that'll fit. Or you cut one to fit. And you're going to fill all four sides. And sometimes it'll take more than one piece to fill the void. You want to put enough in to fill it, but not so much that it is overstuffed and pushes the rush up in the air. That's not a scenario that you want. Sometimes one piece will do it, sometimes it takes two pieces. If it needs two pieces, go ahead and put them in. Generally, the sides will take more than the front and the back. And you're going to want to stuff the top and the bottom. So we're just going to flip it over. The bottom side will generally take more than the top. And once again, you can see our knots, and you can see how they're just going to be covered up by the cardboard, not causing any kind of a problem. And I generally put two pieces in the bottom. And the sides on the bottom won't take as much as the top. Every chair is going to be a little bit different. Now we have it stuffed with cardboard. We're ready to continue weaving. We need to add a piece. So we're going to take our end and we're going to make a knot so that it ends up right in the middle. You don't want the knot close to the corner because that will be in your way. And as you can remember from my other knots, they were in the middle also. So I'm going to tie a square knot. Square knot holds the best. You want to pull your knot as tight as possible. Cut off the excess. And you kind of want to turn your knot so the majority of it is facing down, not sticking up. If it's facing down, then that'll be covered over and it won't be in your way. I'm going to move my clamp up to the front here. And I'm going to take my coil and continue the pattern. I'm coming up through the middle, over the left rail, up through the middle, over the right rail. The same pattern that we've done throughout the entire chair. You can see that the coil is getting kind of tight in the middle. We'll cover what to do when you can't get the coil through the middle in just a moment. Now I'm going to take that strand and tighten it up. Make sure the knot does not interfere at all. And I'm working every corner as I go by. And you can see that it's staying pretty tight. Not too many gaps. And there's that strand, and you can see how the knot is going to be just covered up. Any part of it sticking down won't matter, and the top part will be covered over with the new strands. We're ready to add another coil of material. As you can see, there's not going to be room to put a coil through the middle. So I need to, first of all, add a piece. So I'm going to just tuck that down through the hole, and then I'm going to turn the chair over. And I'm going to make my knot on the bottom. And this knot is going to be about in the middle between the rail and the center hole. Once again, I make a square knot. Pull it as tight as you can. 
and you're going to cut off the excess just like you've done previously. Now this knot, I like to just kind of lift the strands up and tuck it underneath and hide it. And it's kind of hidden, just as this one's hidden, the other knots are hidden. Just my personal preference. And you want to turn it back over, and you want to come over, and this strand is going to go here, and you can see how it's perfectly even all the way across there. With this strand and one more, this side will be finished. And I'm going to move my clamp each time. Now I'm going to come up through the center, and I have to pull all the rush through one piece at a time. Once it's pulled through, then we're going to go towards the back, and we're going to move our clamp to that location. And I'm going to bring that up through the middle also. It takes a little while to pull it all through. It depends how long of a piece you have. If it tangles on you and you get frustrated, you can make the piece shorter and just you'll have more knots underneath. I like to work with as long a piece as I can to reduce the number of knots. Now in here you'll see there's a little gap there and it needs to be tightened up. This is where I use a hammer and I'll just tap it over. And you see how it closed that gap up and made it set tight. I'm going to move my clamp up here, come up through the middle again. Once it's up through the middle, you're going to come this way. And you do want to tighten this up. And since you can't really pull it or get your fingers in there, I'm going to use this hammer and make sure it's nice and snug in there. And I'm going to come over here. And it's not quite filling that, so I'm just going to twist the coil a little bit to loosen it and have it fill in there and fill that gap totally. Now we're going to come up through the middle again and we're going to go over to the other side. Now this time, this will be the last strand that we lay on this side. And then we'll be working on filling the front and the back. You'll see I've got a little bit of a gap there, and that sticking out way too far is kind of cause interference. So I'm going to tap that. I'm just going to force it all. And you can see this last strand lays right in there, just perfectly. Now we're going to wrap the front and the back and finish our chair. strand I'm going to purposely make a mistake back there just to show you what can happen. You see how that hiked up there? That could have happened anywhere along here and if you come back now and look and it happened over here you've got a real problem trying to fix it. So you want to continually make sure you don't have that happening to you any sides but especially in the back. You want to make sure it's down like that. Now we're going to continue weaving in a figure eight pattern to fill in the front and the back. I'm just going to go front to back and I want to make this tight in here so I'm going to hit it with my hammer each time. 
And you can also do the same thing with a wooden wedge. Your idea is you want to compress it in there. Otherwise that'll fill up and you won't have room in the front or the back. You'll see that the hole in the middle starts to close up on you. That's where you're going to use a caning peg and you're going to tap that in there to open up the hole. And you're going to need to do that every time as you get near the end. And now the only way to do it is to bring up the strand, poke it through that hole, and pull it through. You're going to pull it around the front rail and tighten it. And the hole has closed up. And we also have a bit of a gap here. So first I'm going to open the hole back up with the caning peg. You'll see that my rush is very moist here. That makes it a lot easier to manipulate it and to move it. You see how I used the wedge to twist that and close that up. A couple more strands and we're going to be done with this chair. So you're going to come up through the hole that you just made with the peg. Now the back, I can feel there's not room to lay this in there because it's closed up there. So I'm going to open that up. Just by looking, I know I need to get two more strands through here. And there's one of them. Need to open up the hole in the center again. See how it comes right through when you make that hole. Now this should be the last strand going in the front. See how it lays right in there nicely. Then we have to make room for our last strand in the back. I'm not gentle with this peg. I pound it in there and make sure it makes enough room to get a strand through. You see it's kind of closed up right there, so I'm going to use the wedge to just twist it a little bit, make it wide enough that I can lay one strand in there. I'm going to check the back to see if I have room there, and I need to adjust it just a little bit. And I can get that last strand and lay it right in there. And there the chair is completed. It's ready to be tied off. This clamp is holding the tension at this time. You'll notice I was using two clamps at the end there. It was just easier to have a clamp on the front and a clamp on the back. A lot of times I'll use four clamps all the way around. It's just personal preference. The main goal is to never lose the tension. Now we're going to turn it over and tie it off. I have a lot of excess material, so I'm going to cut it out here. And I'm going to take my McCaining peg and this last strand coming from the other way. I'm going to use that to lift it up. Slide this under, remove the peg, and I'm going to pull it tight and pull it tight so it's nice and snug there. Then I'm going to lift up the same strand slide it under there and tie it in a knot. Now you want that knot tight so what I'm going to do is pull it tight first and then hold my finger on it and pull that through so it stays as a tight knot. I'm going to cut this off so it's about six inches long and you can't have a piece of brush hanging down beneath your seat. So I'm going to use the wedge to separate a couple strands and tuck it underneath. Push it in real good so it stays nice and far. You can use your wedge to do a little tidying up under here if you want to. It really doesn't matter because it's the bottom of the chair. You can see a knot there and a knot there. 
Um, you can see some gaps and things, but that's typical on a bottom. Your attention was placed on the top. Remove our clamp. Here we have the completed fiber rush seat.